Sure. Even though I promised God that I will be celibate, I did sure. fall. And sure. in that fall, sure. I saw that. Mm-mm. Two seconds later, <laughs> Ty's nails start falling apart. <laughs> and I believe like a lot of things a happened to you things. in that season. And we were just like, girl. <laughs> a lot What's of going things. On? A lot of things happened in that time. A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Star Talks, where we walk the talk. Now, today I am so excited to be joined by a dear friend of mine who's become a sister. Her name is Latoya Gabriel. Welcome to the channel, Latoya. Hi, shalom. Shalom. <laughs> now, for people who don't know who Latoya is, can you give us a bit more of your background and where you grew up? Mm-hmm. Shalom, I greet you all with the love of the Lord. Mm-hmm. My name is Latoya da Graça Gabriel. I have Mozambican roots. However, I was born and raised in South Africa. Um, yeah, I am a woman on fire for the Lord. Amen. Um, I studied at the University of Johannesburg and I obtained a bachelor degree in education. Um, so I'm currently an IB teacher in Qatar. Wow, wonderful. Now people might be confused and asking what? So how do you guys know each other? Right. Yeah. Can you give them a bit of a backstory of how we met? Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to consider ourselves as global citizens. Amen. Because um, like I said, I studied at the University of Johannesburg. I worked in teaching in South Africa for about three years. And then I was like, nope, this isn't it. I want to go to teach abroad. Um, and that's exactly what I did. I ended up getting... Um, placed at a beautiful school in China and I was there for six years and um, during COVID I I started a job at a new school um, due to the situation in COVID um, where I was currently working they weren't paying very well so I believe it was a blessing from God I got a job at um, one of the very good schools in in Beijing and yeah I was a grade three teacher minding my business just walking in the halls or in the corridor and I hear somebody calling my name and she's mm-hmm. like Latoya Latoya <laughs> and I'm like what who who is that <laughs> And this over eager person comes running up to me and she's like, hey, I know you. And I'm like, yeah, I know you. Hi. And of course it was you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So that's how we know each other. And basically, yeah, you've always been a, a bubbly girl. Yeah. Um, and I was just so excited to see you. And I, I think I just couldn't believe that we were working at the same place. Yeah. Because we only met once before. Yeah. I think and we then- met at like a party or like a yeah get together yeah, outside, yeah. outside outside of um, yeah work yeah 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 so when we saw each other it was like oh snap we're working in the same place yeah especially because it was so uncommon for two black south african yes. females to be working at the, at same, the same place, place. yeah because in china it's they only want a, f- a few a select few mm. And we happen to work together. Mm, and mm, that was mm. the beginning of our friendship. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so at the time, um, you were teaching grade five, I believe. Yes, yes, yeah. I was teaching grade five. You were teaching grade yeah. five. I was teaching grade three. We would meet up um, only when we had our free periods. And, oh my gosh, um, Ustha would be telling me about Jesus <laughs> All the time, like somehow God would always come into our conversations <laughs> and we would we would just be like, yeah, OK, star, like, thanks. Great story. But that's not for us. Mm. And um, having said that, I would just like to reflect on that time in my life where mm. 
I my family we we Catholic as Mozambicans most yeah. of us um, believe in more of like the Catholic side of things but I didn't really I wasn't really introduced to like a relationship with God yeah um, my family was just more focused on grinding mm. it was your nine to five do what you need to do to get your money and that's it we didn't really have like a spiritual background so yeah. God to me wasn't important as well. I knew of him, but he wasn't really, mm. you know, mm. he didn't really matter to me back yes. then. So when you would talk about him, I was just like, okay, I'm great. I love that for you. <laughs> this. <laughs> I love that for you, but me, I'm good. Mm. I'm good. Mm. Um, yeah. So what, what was your memories on, on that season? Sure. Wow. No, God was moving amazingly in that time. And it was a new environment at, uh, at the school that we were at. And during my alone time and in prayer, like God would reveal certain things about people in the school and he'd say, I need to pray for them. Now this was all weird to me <laughs> because I was like, okay, so Lord, these people I hardly even talk to some, I didn't even engage with, but just mm. happened to be in the same environment. Mm. So I'd pray and intercede for them. And Latoya happened to be one of them. Mm. And I, I just reflect on how good God is that even in that season and in that time, even if a person doesn't have that personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. He still puts it in the heart of another believer to say, pray for this one. This one right. is my child. Mm. So I, I think it was a really precious season in my life. Yeah. And from there, the Lord basically told me my time was up. Yeah. I just signed a two year contract. Mm. I, the money was good. Yeah. And uh, was just getting ready to continue working. Right. But something in me kept saying, you know, you're not meant to be there. Yeah. Because initially when I was in China, before I got to China, mm. I said to the Lord, I want to go there for a year. Yeah. Now I'd overstayed my welcome. It was a year and three months. Mm. So it's so crazy because when you make a commitment to the Lord, mm. you have to see it through yeah. by hook or crook. Yeah. If the Lord loves you, he will make sure yeah. that you are brought back down to your knees in obedience. Right. So right. that's what happened with me in that time. And friend, you remember <laughs> I was going through the, the most. most. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. I didn't have a relationship with God at the time, but I could tell that whatever you were going through mm. wasn't normal. Mm. Like we would do something as simple as going to do our nails. There was three of us mm. and we all went to the same place. We all paid the same amount. <laughs> we didn't have the same nail tech, but everybody was pretty much on the same level in terms of the nail techs. Mm. So I do my nails. Another friend of ours do, does her nails. Star does her nails. We all like, oh my gosh, guys, our nails are popping. Everything is nice. Two seconds later, Star's <laughs> nails start falling apart. <laughs> And I believe like a lot of things a happened of to you things. in that season. And we were just like, girl, <laughs> a lot of things, on? a lot of things happened in that time. A lot, a lot, a lot. I, I can't even remember the specifics, but I remember just detailing yeah. one thing after yeah. another, yeah. another, another. Yeah. It always just had to and be And it me. all like it was literally the, the saying when it rains, it pours. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened to you in that season. And we were looking at you on some what's happening we were we were taking it more on like a carnal mm, view mm, of things mm. we were just like no you're just having a bad month it's okay like mm. you're gonna bounce back like don't worry about it and then i think like a week or two later you dropped the bomb that you're leaving mm, mm, mm. and we were like what where are you going because mm. this is like the the hectic season of covid yeah um I believe China still had the ban. Mm, mm. Um, we once we exit, you can't come back. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we were telling you. We were like, Star, if you leave, you can't come back. And I was like, What are you gonna do in South Africa? Because the the job situations in South mm, Africa is mm. not really I was like, girls stay. Mm, and mm. you were like, No, I'm going. Mm, mm, mm. I'm sure, going. sure, sure. Exactly. I just was like, I'm going because I knew that my time was already expired in mm. China. Mm. And 
the flights to and from China were about 7,000 pre-COVID. Right. I'm telling you now mm. that an economy class ticket back then mm. at my travels from China to South Africa was about 50,000 rand. Wow. I'm telling you. 50,000 rand with an 18 hour layover in mm. Frankfurt, Germany. Mm. 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 I almost mm. got held back um, in Frankfurt, Germany mm. after that layover because they, I think they were looking for some documentation of mm. some sort. Mm. But I remember just being in that queue and praying to God and saying, Lord, if really you want me to go, I'm not going to be stuck here. Right. How am I going to be able to pay another amount of money mm. to stay in Germany for an X amount of time and right. then come back? Literally, I kid you not, there was a man that literally came and pulled my hand and he said, no, come, let's go. Sure. Because we were there in the queue waiting to get checked for something. And I, at first they're like, no, stand to the side. All the people that have this paper, but we're not sure about the QR code or whatever. Right. And uh, I literally remember saying a prayer. Lord, if you really want me to go, mm. please, can something happen? And he's like, no, come, let's go. A South wow. African man. Mm. So we went in and we came. Um, yeah. So as I'm saying, like that season was something else in my life. And right just seeking the face of the Lord and trusting him in that mm. time. Mm. And even though I left you guys there in China, I yeah. knew that God was going to do something. Yeah. God was going to do something that I was there for an assignment. Right. Even though I wasn't going to see through the entire contract, but mm. I knew that there was something that God wanted me to be there for. And just sitting next to you right now is testament yeah. of the fact that that's one of the reasons why uh, we had to meet. And right. I had to be right, there at that time. Right. Yeah. yeah sure. So you left the school. Um, we wished you well. We were like, okay, if this is what you want to do, then mm. we support you. Mm. You left. And I believe we weren't really in communication yeah. from the time you left up yeah. until later on. And um, I think you left around December. Yeah. December of yeah. 2021 I think it was 2021 and um, then my life pretty much started we were like in and out of lockdown um, I completed my contract at that school we were yeah. talking about and then eventually I left that school as well and um, b between this time I started to kind of like detach from a lot of my friends yes um, yeah, I was just going through like a, se a season of detoxing my former lifestyle, which was of a part partying, drinking, um, just doing things that I believed was right. Mm. What I thought mm. was life. Mm. And let me tell you, in Beijing, it is so easy to live this lifestyle of partying, of drinking, mm. of just living recklessly, mm. honestly. Mm. And I did that for, I was in China for six years. I did it for pretty much five. Mm. And never once in those five years did I feel like I needed to stop. Mm. Mm. Um I pretty much used my money on alcohol and, mm. and buying clothes on our favorite Taobao. Mm. And I never really invested in myself. Mm. And um, I remember when, even when we met, I would invite you to places and you firmly said that, no, I, I don't do these things or mm. I don't go out. Mm. I can come to your house and visit you, but I'm not really one to party and stuff. Mm. Mm. And I couldn't begin to fathom how a young single woman... <laughs> could have so much self-control and do that mm. but um i just remember I, I i believe i never forced you to do anything mm -mm. but i wanted to do what i wanted to do and at the time it was to party and drink and turn up and do everything mm. like that mm. and slowly but surely i started detaching from that lifestyle sure. um i just it just didn't interest me anymore and um Everybody was going against me. I feel like I was very misunderstood by my friends. Mm. And um, I used to please them. Mm. People pleasing was like a norm to me. I wanted to do whatever I needed to do to make the people around me happy. Mm. And um, it got to a point where I was seeing somebody at the time. And he was a great person. Mm. Um, and he got me 
to see myself in a different light mm. in terms of um my drinking he was like toya you know you don't really have to drink like this so my desire for drinking slowly started to fade when i was seeing this guy and um like i said a lot of people were going against me and eventually mm. him and i broke up so by the time him and i broke up that was like the final straw for me like sure. i just felt like everybody was against me and the only person that i felt um knew me and mm. saw me mm. and i found like peace in mm. him was the very person that dropped me mm. and that's when i just went into a hectic season of depression mm anxiety i developed an eating disorder um i didn't know who i was honestly without my friends without this guy mm. without the validation of man because i was a serial data mm. mm. i didn't know who i was i didn't know what it was to be by myself sure and i panicked i completely panicked and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to reach out to. At the time, I was talking a lot to my ex's mom. Um, and I just kept seeing prayer, fasting, prayer, fasting. And I thought, okay, maybe this is what I need to do. Yeah. I need to go into prayer and fasting because I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the timeline. I think I contacted you just before i went into the prayer and fasting or after i think just after just after i completed it yeah so in that time of the 21 days of prayer and fasting um i went into isolation mm. thankfully it was locked down and i just poured out to the lord mm. i was like lord i need your help mm. if you are real if 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 <sighs> just come through I literally just cried. It wasn't like a like a warfare prayer or mm. anything. I just broke down and I was like, Lord, I, I can't do this. Mm. Mm. I, I need your help. Mm. I need you to help me get over this guy. I need you to just be God in my life. Mm. And that's when I, um, because I had a background of God, I knew about the repentance prayer. I knew about um confessing your sins and stuff so i was just doing things that i knew of because i had seen my mom do throughout our years mm. um yeah and then i completed the 21 days prayer and fasting that and then i believe that that's when i contacted you and we hadn't spoken in a few months but something just told me speak to even even in the prayer and fasting mm. something told me like just contact her contact her and then eventually i did contact you sure 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 wow that's that's jam-packed mm. and just you talking about it now it's it's easy for someone to just listen as a story but i can only imagine the day to day of what that looked like mm -hmm. and by the time i received your call i i was beyond myself yeah i was beside myself literally i remember going on my knees just praising the lord after we'd had our conversation yeah because god is faithful yeah god is faithful now since okay wait can you just clarify when you actually rededicated your life to the lord um so i rededicated my life to the lord in february 2022 okay yeah okay. okay february 2022 um but my breakdown and surrendering yes happened between december 2021 up until like january 2022 sure, sure so i sure. took the leap in december in february 2022 sure yeah sure, sure. that's when it was just mm. too much it mm. was sure you know uh being part of like being a woman being black we don't admit that anxiety and depression and eating sure. disorders are real mm. we we just overlook it and you mm. think that if you're eating it's like oh i'm just i'm just overeating i'm just stressed yeah no there's more to it there's mm. more like i remember oh my gosh i remember this one time i ordered kfc three times sure i ate three burgers sure and oh 
I just remember just cr- that that's when I cried out and I was like, Lord, I cannot do this. Mm. I can mm. I need to deal with whatever I'm going through and call it a day. And that's sure. exactly what I did. Sure. And from that moment I never ever turned back. Amen. I Amen. never ever turned back. Amen. Yeah. Now, can you share a little bit with the people that want to know how was it for you mm-hmm. then transitioning from the life you used to live to your life in Christ? Mm. So, um, in terms of drinking, yeah, I did mention that I was seeing somebody at the time, so he yes. helped me, even though we both weren't um, with the Lord. Yeah, he, I think he's just a genuinely good person. But yeah, slowly, and I believe God used him. Slowly, I was getting detached from drinking. Yes, and the desire to drink faded. Yeah, but it wasn't completely gone. Yeah, because when we did break up, I did go like an alcohol binge, and I did get drunk. Yeah. Um, but when I gave my life to Christ, it's almost as if he took all the alcohol, all my alcoholic desires out. Mm. I would Amen. say that that was like an instant deliverance from Amen. alcohol. Like Amen. you could put it in front of me and I, I would not do anything with it. Amen. And I believe that God does that to show that I am working on you. Amen. I mean, the process of refining you look, Amen. alcohol is here and you don't have a desire for it. Amen. I could go out and see my former friends Um and they would be around alcohol and I wouldn't have any desires for it. Mm. Um, another thing that God did for me personally was I had locks at the time. Mm. And I remember having a dream where I believe God ushered me to remove my locks. Mm. And in the dream, I had removed it and I had my afro out. And a little girl was like, wow, you look so beautiful with your afro. Mm. And I knew that that was like... Um, a calling from God to, for me to remove my locks. Mm. So in obedience, I did it. And then it came to my wardrobe. Um, I remember just looking at my wardrobe and I was like, I don't have anything to go out in the day. Like if I had to go for a walk right now, mm. I don't have clothes for that mm. because everything was revealing. Everything yeah. was short. Everything was for the night in the nightclub. Mm. And that's when God was like, yes, ma'am, clean out your closets. Sure. And that's exactly what I did. And I couldn't even give these clothes to people because that's how bad they were. Mm. Society might look at it and be like, it's not that bad. But these clothing, this, these clothings were bad, mm. like revealing, super revealing. Sure. And that's what God had to do in me. He, mm. he, he had to show me who i am through his lens lenses you know Amen. and that excluded revealing my body mm. and honestly as sad as this sounds growing up that's all i knew sure i felt that the way you want to dress is the best way even if it means showing your assets mm. and god had to quickly correct that sure so yeah it was my social life um, I didn't have a desire to be everywhere. Mm. In Beijing, I was literally in every picture at a party. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I would have people contacting me if I wasn't at a party and they'll be like, yo, we don't see you in the pictures where you're at. Mm. So that's when I knew that I was giving so much of myself to other people mm. and I wasn't investing in myself or mm. even in a relationship with God. Mm. So in that season, I would say I was isolated for a good three to four months. Yeah. And God had to rewire my mind mm. to, for me to see myself through his eyes, for me to understand that life isn't about turning up and life isn't about wasting mm. your years. Um, m- m- forgiveness. I had to work a lot on forgiveness on people that have hurt me, people that I have hurt. Um, so yeah, that that was a refining process. Mm. Um, so this was from the moment that I did the twenty-one day fasting up until the end of that year, mm. I would say. Mm. Um, mm. Through dreams, God revealed who I need to forgive. Sure. He revealed my heart condition, Mm. even as a teacher, to the way that I was treating children Mm. that I didn't like, per se. 
Mm. He said mm. to me, like, I haven't called you to do this. Mm. I've called mm. you to love everybody, even if it doesn't make sense. Sure. Um, and it's so funny because there was a girl that I couldn't stand in my class. And um, God was like, nope, you need to work on that. And the day after, um, I, I, I think I, it was either after a fast or something, but he had just revealed my heart's condition. Mm. This girl's mom contacted me for me to do one-on-one -on -one tutoring with her. Wow. Mind you, this is the person that I could not stand. She was wow. only four years old. She was only four years old, but sure. she was a handful. She really mm. was a handful, but it wasn't in my position to dislike her. Sure. And her mom contacted me, could have contacted any other teacher in the school. And sure. she's like, I want, you, I want you to do tutoring with my daughter. Sure. And I did. And I ended up loving that girl genuinely. Mm. Genuinely. And I, I believe that that was God humbling me mm. to say, you were in the world for 10 years. You were doing the most running around for ignoring me, but I didn't hate you. Mm. Now here's a little girl that doesn't know any better and you hating on her. Mm. Nah. Flip that around, learn to love her, and that's when my whole relationship with God completely changed. Mm. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. That's that's beautiful. That's mm. a beautiful narrative because I think it also just challenges people to ask God to to share their own heart condition yeah. about their various interactions and their lives and how yeah. they engage even at work yeah with colleagues mm -hmm. or family mm. and things like that so i think that's that's an important gem and thank yeah. you for like painting your transition so beautifully mm. what i want to go into with regards to your transition now let's touch on friends yeah. what did that look like for you sure um, so I had a lifestyle of friendship. Yeah. My whole adult life was based and focused around my friends. Whatever my friends said, I was going to do. Mm. And nobody could tell me anything about it. I felt, I feel like I felt some sense of belonging and my identity was behind my friends, which is a form of idol worship. Mm. And when they dropped me, I felt like my whole life stopped. Mm. And I don't even think I knew how to be a friend. Mm. I think I was just comfortable having people around me. And I never knew how to apologize. Mm. I never knew um, how to take responsibility for my actions. It was just easier for me to kind of like blame the next person or look at their faults and not my own. So th this is also part of what God had shown me, my, my heart's condition. And that mm. even if I do argue with people, it's okay. But how we fix it makes a huge difference. Mm. So with that being said, I did lose um, the two friends that were really close to me at the time. Um, I think we just didn't understand each other. Yeah. And um, we grew out of our friendship. Yeah. Um, I remember being called a narcissist. I mm. remember being called very selfish. Mm. I didn't see that. Um, but again, I can't invalidate somebody's feelings. Whatever yeah. I was doing made them feel that way. And yeah. with those things being said, I had to now look at myself and ask God to show me what I did to them. Yeah. So in that in that season, I was detoxing. I was working on myself. I was trying to be a better person. With, even with my mom, my yeah. sister, and my dad, I asked them questions. I was bold enough to, to say to them, like, Mom, Dad, what do you think of me? Yeah. What areas do you think that I can work in? And they yeah. really helped me in that season with regards to that. And um, my dad ended up passing away that year, mm. 2022, May 31 mm. and up until that point I think I was only talking to you at mm. the time mm. Mm. and we prayed and prayed and we mm. asked God for a miracle mm. and obviously I was in China mm. I couldn't leave mm. but um, God connected me with every friend that I did fight with in mm. China mm. and it's amazing how he did that because the mm. people that I had very bad fights with were the ones that were there for me when my dad passed away mm. and i apologized to them mm. um 
And the one we actually ended up getting baptized together. Mm. That's how much God restored our friendship. Amen. And before we gave our lives to Christ, we, it was very superficial. Yeah. It was very friend. Let's go for a drink. Friend, let's do this in the night. We sure. never did anything in the day. Sure. But now, when God restored our friendship, we got baptized together. Amen. We would spend nights praying together Amen. praise parties worshiping together Amen. and even though not every friend came back sure the ones that did mm. it was for a purpose amen it was for a purpose and the people that i called friends when i gave my life to christ um somehow the narrative of who latoya was in the world changed sure to now oh she's different we can't relate with her yeah and yeah. different words about me not so positive were mm. being said mm. and then scripture started coming to me where uh, i believe jesus says they hate you because they hated me yes and you will you will go through persecution yes and those scriptures started coming to me and i'm like oh Mm. This is what Jesus was talking about. Amen. This is what the Bible prepares us for. Sure. Because society has normalized weird behavior. Yeah. That yeah. when you stand out because you're following Christ, you look like the weird one. Mm. Mm. And I believe mm. that that's what happened when we first met. Yeah. <laughs> When we first met, we were like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as I gave my life to Christ, we could have a conversation. And I was like, oh, this is what you were telling me back then. Mm, amen. Um, and yeah, God just did a beautiful thing in my life where I don't have dozens of friends, but I have friends. I have qualitative friends. Amen. You're right. Amen. And I'm so grateful to God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wow. And can you please share some advice that you'd have for young ladies mm. and young men, perhaps, yeah. that are transitioning mm. from their life in the world to their life in Christ in terms of friendships? Looking back now, what would yeah. you say to Latoya back then? Sure. I've learned that life without God is like a car without fuel sure that's powerful there's absolutely no way that your relationships are going to make sense without a relationship with god yeah it's yeah. one thousand percent impossible mm. because how is it that my whole life i've had friends i've had relationships and none of them made sense mm. where i gave my life to christ at 30 i believe i was 30 years old in three years, I've managed to better my relationship. How? Mm. What? What's the common denominator here? Mm. God. Amen. Um, he hasn't called us to understand everything. He hasn't called us to have answers for everything. But if you make him the center of everything your finances your relationships your your business your marriage your friendships if you make god the your firm foundation he will at least guide you mm. you will have that discernment to not live according to your own strength but god's strength mm. he will yeah. show you that you don't have to drink and smoke and party to feel whole sure he will show you what to do with your money. He will show you which friends to choose. Yes. He will show you what to do with your time. He will show you which job to accept. Yeah. So you don't have to go through all those seasons of being burnt where if you just invite God into your plans, yeah. he will show you the plans that he has for you. Mm. God's will be done, not mine. Amen. So it's just a matter of surrender. I would I would say to the youth or young young women and men, surrender your life to God. Yes. Be a child. Let let God direct you. Yeah. Stop trying to be the author of your own destiny because it's going to flop. Yeah. yeah. It's going to flop completely. Sure. And sure. if it means being a weirdo, so be so it. So be it. So be it. So be it. Now we're both weirdos. Now we're both weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> and the so-called weirdo will call the original weirdo <laughs> for advice 
the kid. So just be the weirdo. Just be the weirdo. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Love that. So let's talk about dating. Mm. Right? You termed yourself as a serial dater before. Yeah. But now you are a woman of God. Right. What does dating look like for Christian women? Are you allowed to date? Maybe other people say no. Maybe yeah. your man is meant to fall out of the sky. Yeah. But w- what's dating sure. like? Um, let me just say being in the world is a lie. Mm. It is a lie and it's a waste of time. Sure. Um, I look back at all the relationships that I had mm. with, uh, we can't even call it a relationship, all the time wasting that mm. I did. Mm. And I think about, it was, it was two broken people meeting. Mm. If I don't have a relationship with God and you don't have a relationship with God, what are we doing? Mm. What are we seriously doing? And I'm not saying that people have um, people are evil if they're not with Christ. Yeah. I believe that the, even people in the world have genuine hearts. Yeah. You have some people that are just good people, yeah. but they don't have direction in Christ. Yeah. So you don't have that wow factor. But then you also get some people that are just evil. You know, they just don't have good hearts. And it's a Russian roulette when you're dating. It's either you're going to find a really broken person with an evil heart that is going to hurt you. Or you're going to find a good person with a good heart, but you guys are just not ready to be in a union. God has not called us to be serial daters. Mm. And you can see this because if you're in the world, you can't tell me that you're going to fight temptation and not fall into fornication. Mm. You're not mm. going to fall into consecutive da- multiple dating. You don't have that strength. Mm. There's mm. absolutely mm. no way that you have that strength. So that's what I was doing for a major part of my adult life. Fornicating, mm. trying to fix broken pieces, mm. trying to assist God. And in that process, I kept meeting broken men and I was sure. broken myself. Sure. And I settled to believe that marriage is not for me. Mm. I settled to believe that I'm only good enough to sleep around or to um, be a baby mama if ever I felt pregnant. Sure. I, sure. I, my, my level, my, I did not have any self-value. I didn't even see myself as anything. Sure. I, 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 oof, it was, I didn't see myself as anything. Anything good, I didn't believe I deserved it. So when I gave my life to Christ, I told God, I was like, you know what? I don't want this sleeping around thing anymore. Um, I want better for myself. Mm. And that's when God, that's when I told God, okay, I'm going into celibacy until I find the man that you want me to be with. Obviously, this isn't easy. I'm not going to lie and pretend and say that this was simple for me. It did come with like fallbacks and all of that, but for the most part, I um, I did my best to stay away from temptation. Mm. And that looks like being honest with yourself and not being in a room with the guy. Because um, the devil will try anything to sure. take you back to that lifestyle. And um, waiting has now shown me that there are so many relationships that are in the world. And people say, oh, I love my baby. I love my boo, baby this my man my man but take away sex sure off of the table tell a man that you are not having sex until marriage Mm. the true colors of that person will come out yes and that's what i've seen in these past two and a half years of waiting i've seen that once you show your value Mm. there's not many men that will accept Mm. that truth because it's been normalized to sleep around yeah it's been normalized to test drive before you buy that car sure and it's amazing how god showed me that that's a demonic thought Mm. that is so demonic so now i've been on both sides of the world i've been that girl to have sex before marriage Mm. and now i've been that girl that's waiting Mm. to have sex until um until the day i get married and i've seen that Dating is actually easier now. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I don't have to do that much work. Right. I just have that as an opening line and either I get ghosted 
mm. or I have a guy pretending that he's okay with it, mm. but eventually he'll say, I can't wait. Mm. And then I will say, but if you want to have sex, why don't you marry me? And they'll be like, I'm not ready to marry. Then I'm like, mm. then why are we having sex? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. God has shown me that it's easier. Mm. Our lives are so much easier with God. Mm. Weapons will form, mm. but they won't, they won't prosper. prosper. Amen. Amen. You know, sure. my life is so much easier now. Mm. That opening line, mm. oh, that opening line works. Mm. It works. It works. And they run away. <laughs> Amen. They That's run. what we want. Right. Right. And I, I 1000% respect that. Sure. I would rather a man run away. Yeah. Because I've, sp I've spoken my truth. Yes. Not like the old Latoya that will be a people pleaser and yes. just sleep with you because that's what you want. Sure. But I'm a child of God now. I see my myself through God's lens. Mm. God is a jealous God. Mm. He wants us whole. Mm. I want my husband to have a good version of me. Yes. You know, so I had to learn the hard way. It, even when I did give my, my life to Christ, I did fall. Sure. Even though I promised God that I will be celibate, I did sure. fall. And sure. in that fall, sure. I saw that mm -mm, I sleep with this man, I will end up like this. I mm. sleep with this man, I'm going to end up like that. Sure, sure, sure. Men sure. know what they want. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't take seven years for them to know. Mm -mm. Men know. Mm. But we allow them to have husband benefits on a boyfriend title. Mm. And that's what I had to get out of my mind really, really quickly. Mm, mm, mm. And now what do you look for now in a, in a kingdom spouse and a husband? Yeah. What, what do you look for now? Mm. What are your markers of a, of a good man that yeah. you think has the potential of being that for you? Sure. A good man. Um, I need him to have a relationship with God. Man. He doesn't have to be prophet level, pastor level, but he needs to know that there's a higher power mm. and that that higher power is Jesus Christ. Mm. I need him to value his relationship with God. Mm. If, if he puts anything above his relationship with God, for me, that's a red flag. Yeah. I don't want him to put me before God yeah. or our marriage or our union, um, his job, working out. If he puts anything before his relationship with Christ, for me, that's a red flag. Yes. Um, I know that we're not perfect. We will never be perfect. But I need somebody at least with that firm foundation. Yes. Everything that comes after that, I will know that this is my man mm. from God. Mm -hmm. Another thing is I've, I'm not going to be Bob the Builder anymore. Mm. Mm. If this guy still needs me to be on some chiseling and all right, well, we, we're <laughs> doing the most. I, I, I did the Lord's work enough back then. <laughs> I'm not doing it now. Mm. Mm. In the sense that he should have his own direction at least when yes. we come together yes we can grow as a couple yes but if you still doing things that doesn't make sense financially emotionally spiritually i'm not bob the builder mm, mm, mm. i did my season of being chiseled by god by myself yeah and i believe that we all do go through that process if we allow god to Yes. Before we meet our spouse. Yes. When we come together, we can rise far mm. and beyond mm. completely. Mm. But he needs to at least know Christ. Yes. Also, I am not looking anymore. Yes. It says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. If you look in the book of Genesis, Adam was working. Yeah. Before he found Eve. Yeah. Um, many examples in the Bible, Ruth was working mm. before she found her Boaz. Yeah. So, or before Boaz found her. Yes. So I'm not, I don't have my goggles on searching. Mm -mm. Mm. I will only do what the Lord has permitted me to do. God's Amen. will be done. Amen. Not mine. Amen. In the past, I looked. Yes. I searched. Yes. I looked for men according to my eyes yeah. and not what God had for me. Sure. So that's that's it for me. God is a firm foundation and waiting on God's promise for me 
that's how I'm waiting for my husband. Mm, amen. Yeah. That's beautiful. Now, since we're having this very serious chat, other people might be looking at us as mm. though, oh no, these girls have no fun whatsoever. They're right. always so serious. Right. But let us debunk that right now mm. by asking, yeah. Latoya, what do you do for fun now? Ooh, what do I do for fun? Um, Crazy enough, I like being alone. Mm. I love being alone in my house. Um talking to god mm, mm, um mm. business has yeah. been like very close to me yes i enjoy entrepreneurship i enjoy yes. thinking of ways on how to build kingdom finances yes um i enjoy going out in the day yeah and and it's, it's just so amazing because a few years ago i could not go out in the day i couldn't yeah. stand it yeah. but now i like going for brunch either by myself or with friends yes um i enjoy going to the beach thankfully now um i'm in a country where it allows you to just enjoy yourself peacefully yeah um i go to the beach quite often i go shopping quite often i also enjoy taking care of myself a little bit more now mm. whether it's going for facials or um getting my hair done getting mm. my nails done that's quite therapeutic um yeah, I I also I also enjoy um vlogging. Hmm. I do vlogs here and there. I do um sharing like information that I've gotten from Christ. Hmm. Um talking to my friends. Hmm. Very peaceful. I'm at a, I'm in a very peaceful stage of my life. Um I used to idolize my birthdays a lot. Hmm. And now God has worked so wonderfully in me where my I feel like my birthday is not for me anymore. Mm. On my birthdays, I like to use that season to surrender to God and let Amen. him use me as a servant. Amen. So I enjoy being a servant for God for fun. Mm. Um, yeah, um, I enjoy traveling mm. quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I do for fun. And I love it. And I feel like my idea of fun has changed. Yes. It's not about where I'm going, what I'm doing. Mm. But it's like that joy of the Lord that I feel in my heart. That mm. even if I have like one real in my bank account, I'm still okay. Mm. I'm still having fun. Mm. Um, even if it's being at home alone. Mm. To me, that is fun. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah you also touched on business and entrepreneurship yeah so <laughs> take a look at our merch and what we are wearing today yes mm -hmm. oh my gosh this is my new baby yes um and it's called alua culture so last year this time actually yeah i got um it was also through my prayer and fasting last year, just before my birthday. Yeah. And I was visiting a star and her family. And I was just like, mm, I want a miracle before my birthday. Mm. And I didn't have any prayer points mm. at all. I was just like, I want this to be uh, Matthew 6 verse 33 type Amen. of prayer and fasting. Lord, do what you need to do. Mm. And I just come back from China. Um, and then I applied for this job mm. in Qatar and I remember coming to Star and Man of God and I was like, mm, I want this job, but I'm not too sure if it's from Christ. Mm. And then mm. both both you and Man of God were like, nah, take it, go mm. for it. Mm. Got the job, everything was nice. I left in a heartbeat. Sure. It was super quick. And I got there and God put me in a territory that was wow. Yeah, Qatar isn't anything compared to China, compared to being in South Africa. Mm. And I quickly learned that um, Christianity is very different mm. in that region. Mm. And I started thinking to myself, because you're not allowed to evangelize, you're not allowed to do anything that we are comfortable to do in South Africa. And I was like, how am I going to spread the goodness of God without spreading the goodness of God? Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's when I came up with Alua culture. Alua yes. stands for God in Yoruba. And because they know Jesus and they know Christ and they know God, I couldn't take a risk mm. to, to put that 
on my clothing. Yes. So I said Alua and God has a culture. Amen. Jesus culture is it. Amen. You know, people think that being Christian is boring yes. and oh now that we have to be modest, we have to dress boring, we have to look nah. There's still culture in mm. having God with you. He's teaching us how to dress and in that apparel we've got scripture. Amen. We've got scripture. So even if you're no matter where you are in the world, you're wearing something that says um that you are Proverbs 31 like the loungewear mm, that we're wearing mm, now. Mm, mm, mm. Proverbs 31, you wear that the whole day. People are going to be like, "What's Proverbs 31?" Yes. Tell me more. Yes. So a lower culture is apparel that is a conversation starter yes. between people. Yes. No matter where you are in the world. Yes. Um, gone are the days where we have to hide Christianity, where we have mm. to hide who Jesus is. I don't want to do that mm. because um, he fixed me. He molded me. He Amen. shaped me into the woman that I am today. He pulled me out of a hole that I got myself into. Sure. And many people need to know about how great and mighty God is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That is Olua culture for you. Now, Latoya, mm -hmm. where can people purchase Olua culture? Yeah. So, Alua Culture is going to be available from October. We're yes. going to launch in October. Sure. And it's going to be available on Take A Lot. Um, mm. I'm starting with South Africa. Yeah. Um, I would love to give back to South Africa. I feel like we've got so much to do as a nation. Yes. And we need to get back to God mm. wholeheartedly. And I know South Africans, we like to look good. Mm. We enjoy um, worshipping as well. Amen. So I'm bringing it home. I'm bringing it home Amen. October. We, um, God willingly, we are launching. Yes. Take a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's exciting. Mm. And I want to, as we go in closing, which mm. this has been a wonderful conversation. I'd love to know, mm. how do you want to be remembered one day? Sure. Um, I'd like to be remembered as you don't need to have everything answered. You don't need to know everything. Sure. I feel like my life and my testimony is a great example of things don't stay permanent forever. Things don't stay the way that they are forever. Mm, mm. Um, I'm a great example of change. Sure. And of mercy, mm. that God is merciful mm. and he is forgiving mm. and he will, he will meet you wherever you allow him to. Amen. So I would like to be remembered as change. Sure. That it's possible to change regardless of where you are in your life. And I didn't realize that my name is actually very prophetic. Mm. Latoya means victorious one. Wow. And I feel like there's victory in change. Yes. Um, so that's exactly how I'd like to be remembered. You know, there's so many broken people out there that feel that life will never change for them mm. because they're so stuck in their ways. Mm. But it's amazing that when you do surrender genuinely and just call out to God and tell him that you, you can't anymore, mm. that change is possible. Yeah. And there's no such thing as wasted years with God because mm. he will replace every single second that you've lost before. Mm. It might not go the way that you want it to go, yeah. but it will go way better than what you ever expected. Mm. So yeah, when I, when I think of the legacy I want to leave behind, it's just change. Mm. Change, changing through God and being victorious through God mm. um, and excelling beyond mm. your expectations. Amen. Mm. Excelling beyond your expectations. We are so grateful to have had you with us here today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
you're my girl <laughs> <laughs> you're my first you're my friend thank you so much for sharing the beautiful gems that you have thank you and if people want to find you where can they find you yeah so you can find me on instagram yes. it is latoya underscore gabriel if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and you can find me on tiktok which is latoya underscore underscore gabriel mm -hmm. and on youtube i have a youtube channel yes. which is faithful journeys with latoya thank you you're most welcome thank you so guys we have had a fantastic interview with latoya we've had a wonderful conversation hopefully you had your own cup of cocoa this is cocoa that we're drinking right here or tea and have had an enjoyable conversation with us if there's anyone else that you'd like for us to contact to get in touch with that could be inspiring to you in any way please feel free to drop it down on the comment section below tell us what you gained from the conversation Latoya will surely be one to read the comments as well and reply to any questions that you have other than that thank you so much for joining us until we meet you again on star talks where we walk the talk Thank you.